Hey everyone, Crypto Kiwi here. Just a quick video on an update to my Bitcoin solo mining efforts and my journey here. The number of ASICs that I have has expanded quite dramatically since when I did a video on it a while back now. I've got over 20 ASICs that are solo mining. So we're going to check out the hardware that I've got. We're going to check out uh, what I'm mining to. And by that, I mean I have an Apollo 2 uh, doing this, some the, running the pool for the solo mining. So we'll have a look at that and the statistics. We'll look at for the hash rate that I have, what the likelihood is and my chances of hitting a block solo and when that's likely to be. A quick touch on the strategy. So how I'm managing to uh, fund and, and operate this effort and why I'm trying to do this. So that's what's ahead. Stay with us. Here's the mining facility. If you've seen one of the videos, let's check it out. What's going on? Okay, here's an updated mining facility. You'll probably notice there's a lot less power cords from any other video and more miners. I now have two racks. They're all venting externally. I built this myself. I have some big fans in the back to pull it all out, but here's where it all runs. The same over here. There's another big fan in the back pulling all that out. I have filters that go on the fronts of uh, the machines to keep them all clean as I can. I change those regularly, but for now, I just wanted to show you what it all looks like out here. You can see they're all, uh, they're all happily working. The four big units in the middle are the latest ones that I have. They're S21 plus 235 terahash, so nearly one petahash of compute power there, just in those four. This rack is my older miners. I've got nine S19 J Pro 104 terahash units in here uh, with a few other things. Not everything's running right now, so... Um, but I also put in some um, industrial controls, so this allows me the ability to remotely switch on, switch off, and reboot, kind of a hard reboot if need be. Uh, that's, if there's a bit of a power dip, sometimes they get hung, and you can't necessarily just log in and reboot it. So with that, I can actually repower or turn things off or things like that. So very handy, but that's, that's all the hardware. I should mention it's Texas, and it's still hot. So this, this helps cool things down. It doesn't make too much moisture where it's too humid in here. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, right now you can see it's actually 50% humidity and 27.8 Celsius. So 50% is fantastic. That's not humid at all. Uh, you might notice not many GPUs are working. Well, as you're probably aware of that too, not a great time for GPU mining. So I'm doing a whole bunch of Claw AI, but another video on that another time. For now, I just wanted to show you all of this. A key part of the strategy, I think anybody's strategy, is to keep your costs as low as possible with business. And for me, having a solar farm like this helps me keep the cost of energy right down. So when you're solo mining and I'm running these machines, I'm really not having to pay a great deal to keep these things running. So I think that's an excellent part of the strategy. Okay, so I use Foreman as the way to manage and monitor all my ASICs. I have 41 ASICs right now. So when you get that many, you really need to be able to see what's going on. I can't go out there and just look at lights all the time. So this is handy. I've got three S19 XPs. They're doing in the low 140s, as you'd expect. I have a couple of S19J Pro Pluses. So they're 120 terahash units, but I have them in low power mode. So they're doing around whatever, 95, 100. Then I have nine S19J Pro 104 terahash units. They're all in low power mode. Uh, you can see this one's actually running Vanish firmware. I had a few boards start to develop temp pick sensor errors so I put them all in one miner put Vanish on tick the box that said don't worry about temp sensors and that's how I deal with that so um, got to be creative rather than having too many miners that are down all the time then I have a couple of S21s that are 195 terahash and then four of the big guys the S21 pluses that are the 235 terahash so when you put all of that hash rate together you end up with uh, well, right now it's saying 2.96, which is pretty cool. Just about to hit onto three. Oh, it just updated. But that's about right. Uh, an average of 2.68, so uh, over an hour, which would sound which would sound right. I mean, this unit itself is actually doing a little bit of mining. It's doing five and a half. But um, in total, that's 20 units, 20 ASICs out there, and this, this the future bit Apollo 2 unit itself, which is doing the five terahash and then also uh, that's what I'm actually using for my solo mining pool. So you can see that this unit reckons one in uh, 2,695 in a day, which is pretty good. I mean, I'm a fan of those odds. Obviously, the odds change based on 
the network hash rate so right now it's reasonably high if we have a look at that over the last yeah I guess this is on the month through at 1.1 I guess this is zeta hash or zeta hashes uh, it's been you know less than that so right now it's pretty high so that's probably good because it's only going to go up over time and as obviously it goes up then if I maintain the same hash rate my chances actually go down a little bit but so what kind of chances do I have with this kind of hash rate right for the net coin uh, for the Bitcoin overall global hash rate and then my my hash rate of two point I guess six two point well I typed it in a couple of things maybe I should do 2.7 because that seems to be closer you know chance in a day yeah it seems similar to what I was seeing one in less than 3,000 time estimate eight years uh, some of these other ones a little bit more uh, detailed so chance in a year one in nine um, here this is I believe Voss coins mining calculator uh, this one's quite cool solo satoshi you know it breaks it down a little bit more I mean I, I love when I look at the relative odds to winning Powerball one in you know nearly 300 million to win Powerball and here it's one in only less than 3,000 per day you know one in 93 per month chance per year one in eight I mean we saw something else one in nine so around there not bad if everything stayed the same it would be 7.64 years to find a block so I'm not I'm not wanting to wait that long I'm hoping it happens in the next two or three years but I'm gonna I'm gonna duke it out for two or three years and see what happens so uh, block reward 3.15 is currently would be 351,000 so I think that's uh, amazing another calculator I just used a whole bunch of them and I guess if we do 2.7 it's gonna change a little bit this one I think is a bit optimistic because the hash rates a little bit low so I don't think it's one in seven I think it's more one in eight one in nine um, you probably saw on my Apollo 2 that I had a lot of rejected shares and that does concern me it's mainly all due to the big miners the s21 plus 235 terahash units uh, and I've tried a few things but I think the I think this machine is actually just struggling so I saw a video that the hobbyist miner did about how to set up your own solo pull on a machine at home and I have tons of computers so I'm actually going to try that out uh, and see if I can do anything in there to try and fix some of those shares because um, having that many rejected shares obviously is affecting your actual uh, you know chances my chances are not going to be that high when I've got nearly 10% rejected shares so it'll be a little bit lower but um, yeah that's where we're at on my solo mining so I'm going to keep going for it and let's see if we hit one I thought I could show you my machines and even the Bitcoin address that I'm mining to when I say show all data it actually shows you here is the wallet or here here's the Bitcoin address that I'm mining to and then I, I appended it with an appropriate designator so I know which unit it is but these are all the machines and um, yeah obviously there's a lot there's 20 ASICs in here and they're all mining to the same same wallet and that is the address so with any luck that address is going to hit a block hopefully soon maybe in the next 10 minutes or whenever the next block reward is you never know here is the Apollo 2 Bitcoin node and running the solo mining pool so that's what I'm using okay so we had a look at the hardware we had a look at the hash rate we had a look at my chances of hitting a block uh, so some of the other aspects I mentioned at the beginning why am I doing this well you could you could say that it's predominantly fun I enjoy it I have an alert set up so that if that uh, Bitcoin address hits a block and there's a payout I'll, I'll know about it so it's kind of it's just like having a lot of lottery tickets it's kind of how I look at it right it's a, it's a there's a hope but it's fun I mean the chances aren't ridiculous so there is a reasonable likelihood that I may hit a block in the next you know year or two or maybe three so uh, the funding mechanism well you know the solar obviously is a good offset so that keeps the price of my power down but at the same time, it's not the only thing I mine. I have a bunch of other miners. So I also have some Litecoin. I have some Dash miners. I have some L7s out there doing um, CKB on the Nervous. I have a, a, some Zeek, right, or the Zcash from the Z15 Pros that I'm mining. And I've been doing that for a few years now. If you look back to when I first bought some of these ASICs, that would be two or maybe even two, nearly three years ago now. Well, if you look at the, the Zeek, the Zcash, it had a huge pump uh, this past week. Um, it got past 250 per per token, I guess, and I had more than 100 from my two years of mining. So 
I offload those at around $250. So that's $25,000. My miner was about three and it's been running for two years. So it's more than funded all the power. And then that helps continue to pay the power bill to offset all the solo mining that I'm doing. So my operation is probably fairly neutral, to be honest, because the profit I do make on, on some of those, you know, funds the uh, the lottery that I'm, that I'm playing. So that's kind of really the how I fund it and how that works. And uh, fundamentally why I'm doing it is just for fun. So that's where that's at. Um, I do have all the GPUs that you see in the background. In case you're wondering why I have all these uh, old 30 series cards, uh, the more powerful ones, the, the 3090s, 3090Ti's, 3080s, 3080Ti's, and I did have some 4090s. You may even see some boxes back there. They're all on the claw AI right now, and they're, they're profitable. They're way more profitable than doing crypto mining. So um, my machines are always rented for some reason. So whether that means that I have the price too low, I don't know, but I'm going to do a video about that. Uh, and also the, the lower end ones, I haven't done anything with yet because they don't seem to be quite so profitable, but I will be doing something with those. So they do all exist. They do all have a purpose and I'm not selling any and I'm just using them. I've had them for four years and I think a lot of them have paid themselves back. So at this point, I'm just finding things to do with them. So that's why all the boxes are here. It's because I have the cards and I'm, and, you know, still use them. So that's what's ahead uh, in future videos. Also, I've seen some other videos from YouTubers talking about some of their experiences with, with Bitmain. I've had a Z15 Pro at Bitmain for repair since February, and I still haven't got it back. So stay tuned. Uh, that's a work in progress. And I'll let you know at the end of that experience uh, how that ends up and then also what the journey was and my, my views on that going forward. So that'll be in some future videos. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, click the little button, subscribe, and there'll be more videos to come soon. Thanks a lot. Crypto Kiwi out.